All right there, let's get to it. We're talking about speed and read timing controls today. And what I want to do is look at the more advanced read time controls. So I'm going to right click and say read time clip. And I now have an interface in the timeline that allows me to control the timing of the clip. I know I'm inside the interface when I have speed change written in the top left corner. And I have a series of arrows above the thumbnails telling me the speed and direction of my clip. So blue means real speed, 100% playing forward. Underneath the thumbnail, I have an indication of my speed. And I also have a pop-up menu that I can click to reveal a contextual menu with more read time changes. Now, the easiest way to change the time of your clip inside of this interface is to grab the top left or the top right corner of the clip and either contract it or expand it. Uh, you can see the percentages at the bottom of the clip change as I do this. So I can very quickly do this by eye and determine exactly where I want the clip to begin and end. And that will change the speed of the clip accordingly. I'm going to click in the drop-down menu and reset to 100%. You also have the ability to select a specific percentage in the same drop-down menu. I found that keeping to round numbers tends to give a much cleaner output. So at 150%, for example, my playback is almost immediate. It didn't require as much rendering as something that's mathematically off, like 301. So, so far, so good. We're still keeping it pretty simple. But we can make it even more interesting by applying variable speed changes. So that means that the clip will experience different speeds at different times. In order to change the speed of a clip, you have to access the drop-down menu and add a speed point. And that will act almost like a keyframe that determines the point at which the clip will change the speed. So you can see there's now two percentages on either side. And if I grab the keyframe and start pulling it, I start increasing the speed of the clip on the left-hand side. So I could have it so that it's playing in real time at the start, and then at a certain point it speeds up. Or if I drag it beyond 100%, you can see that the arrows have become yellow to indicate a slower speed. And I'm now playing in slow-mo after which it speeds up. You can delete a speed point by going to the clip directly after it and clicking clear speed point. You can also add multiple speed points. So I could have one here and I could have one here. And then I can just change the duration of all three of these so I can have this playing very quickly in the middle and then nice and slow on either side. I'm going to reset the clip, and now I'm going to demonstrate how a freeze frame could be employed in the read time function. Uh, with this, you just have to scroll to where you want the freeze to occur. Select freeze frame, and that will reveal two keyframes between which the footage is locked off and is still frame. Beyond this, the frames will continue as normal. So then I can grab this and extend it for as long as I want, and my footage will play 100% freeze to zero, and then a few seconds later, proceed from the same point back to 100. To get out of the speed change controls, you just have to click in the top left corner on the X, but you can always re-access these by right-clicking on the clip and going back into read time clip, and all of your original controls will still be in here. The shortcut to the read time tool is Control or Command R. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.